okay. So uh, I think it's Scream 6 time. Okay. I haven't really been bothering with them since the first one. Okay, so this is the latest instalment from Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette, who were earmarked briefly to make Cocaine Bear. And then they they didn't do it because they were going to concentrate on the Scream franchise instead. And I think actually Cocaine Bear did well for that because I think that, um, you know, as it was, I think we got we got the probably the best movie that Cocaine Bear could have been. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is the first film in the franchise not to feature Neve Campbell's character, Sydney, although Sydney is mentioned in Dispatches. Oh, yeah, Sydney, she's not around anymore. You know, we all wish her well. Um, Being mentioned in dispatches. Yeah, she's there. mentioned in the script. Yes. Have you never heard that phrase? No, I have. No, I just the word dispatch in a movie like this. Yeah, is, no, no. Yeah, it's, another oh, I see. Sorry, she's mentioned she as having been dispatched. No. Um, she said there, there's this has been a lot of this in the press. She said, as a woman. Oh, this is Neve Campbell. As a woman, I've had to work extremely hard in my career to establish my value, especially when it comes to Scream. I felt that the offer that was presented to me, this is for the thing, did not equate to the value I have brought to the franchise. It's been a very difficult decision to move on to all my Scream fans. I love you. You've always been so incredibly supportive to me. I'm forever grateful to you and what this franchise has given me over the past 25 years. Now, when I first reviewed Scream, Wes Craven's Scream, I did a, there was an onstage thing and it was with Wes and um, I think maybe Drew Barrymore and other members of the cast. If I had known then that 25 years later, I would have been reviewing Scream 6, I think I would have had a much heavier heart. I had interviewed uh, Wes, who I'd interviewed Wes Craven loads of times over the years, as you know, I'm a big fan of his. We talked about how Scream was really smart and really funny and a great celebration of, uh, you know, of, of horror. But I said, of course, all the, all the work was really done in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. He said, I know, but, you know, how many people saw Wes Craven's New Nightmare? How many people saw Scream? Scream really felt like it was a smart kind of postmodern twist, you know, because there was a whole thing about them all talking about the rules of how horror movies worked. And then very rapidly, you got the scary movie uh, parody, parody, parodying something which was already parodying itself. It was already, but and then you got the sequels, and then you got the sequels to the sequels, and then you got the sequels to the sequels to the sequels to the sequels. And it's like, yeah, okay, this record has absolutely run dry. So in the new film, um, Melissa Brera, Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding, Jenna Ortega. Courtney Cox uh, back, um, reprising roles from previous installments and Jack Champion. Anyway, a whole bunch of people, Samara Weaving. So uh, the sisters, uh, Samantha and Tara and uh, Chad Mindy, they've, they've, they've left Woodsboro. They're now in New York. They're going to make a new start, but they're not going to make a new start because the ghost face killers, killings. I mean, because it's you know it's been it's been changing from movie to movie. Who who, who is doing the ghost face is. Uh, it's the thing, so it's still because obviously that's how the, the franchise works, and the dialogue is yet more postmodern, cine literate riffing on formula horror, formula horror sequels, and formula horror franchises. Wow, let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. So, before the screening, we were told that there was an embargo on the reviews, but there was a spoiler review embargo until Monday. I couldn't spoil this film if I tried. And I'll tell you why. Because I neither know nor care who anyone is or what happens to them. The plot is basically the person who you thought was that person is in fact this other person in a mask. When you thought that they were one thing, they were actually another thing that we only just thought of, but we're going to pretend we thought of it before. And when you thought that murder scene was rubbish, it's because it actually wasn't a murder scene. It was a ruse. And maybe they didn't. Or maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they aren't the person that you, maybe that person. And when you take the mask, there's, there are points in it when characters are unveiled who we've seen. And I'm going, I, I don't even know who that is. And I, and I absolutely don't care. Also, Anyone can be stabbed multiple times without dying. And in the very next scene, they will not just be alive, but they will be better and up and running around. I had a uh, hernia operation, which was done medically supervised, very, very small. And, you know, da -da -da -da, couldn't walk for a couple of days afterwards. I'm mm -hmm. pretty certain that a large bread knife being inserted into your body several times will not allow you to bounce back in the next scene with a little bandage. Also, characters might be dead. They might not be dead. You say, was that a bad death scene or was it a stage death scene? Is somebody really who they say they are? Are they somebody else's the other person? Are they? And I'm going, as for the killer, it's like, it's been so many people now that I just, I, I don't know. On the upside, there's a scene with a ladder 
balance between two windows in which characters have to crawl over the ladder, which is quite well done and tense. On the downside, I didn't care whether they managed to make it to the other end of the ladder because I don't care at all. I wasn't scared. I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't entertained. I wasn't diverted. I actually found myself going, come on, Kermode. I mean, just, you know, compare it to, you know, is it technically better? Are some of the jokes more? It's like, no, we did all this. We did all this so many years ago, so much better. And I know, okay, fine, I'm approaching 60 and probably it's a generational thing. And maybe some of the people who are going to enjoy the movie weren't even born when Scream came out. It's just stop. Just stop. Stop having these smug conversations about, oh, yeah, well, there's, a, there's one bit in which two characters go, oh, okay, which Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, the first one. Oh, which Friday the 13th? Oh, the thing, the thing. Oh, there's a joke about that. Oh, yeah. And then uh, which version of Candyman? Oh, the original or the the reboot? Both. Oh, yeah. Game C's game. You go, I've been around horror fans my entire life. None of us speak like that. Never have done, never will do. Don't know, don't care, couldn't spoil it, because having seen it, I've got absolutely no idea of or interest in who did what, to whom, how, how when, and so on. Stabby, 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 uh, 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 stabby, stabby. Oh, no, it's him. It's, 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 Kate Scooby. Williams. it's Scooby-Doo. Kate Williams in Wolverhampton has sent us a, a, a picture of her ticket for Scream 6. Oh, I'm sorry. It says on the ticket, it's a little, a little description of the film. Mm. Tells, tells the story, Scream 6, tells the story of a super smart mouse called Patty and her <laughs> feline friend Sam as they embark upon an exciting adventure of some proportions through ancient Greece. I'd watch that. Certificate U. Oh, no, that's epic tales. Genre isn't it? Sorry. horror. Um, and they've crossed, so the certificate U, and then someone has written 18 in large letters next to it. And Kate says, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall in the room when the staff at the Majestic in Bridge North realised realized the listing for Scream 6 suggested it was a U certificate story of a super smart mouse <laughs> and her feline friend instead of the latest instalment of the ghost face going to... New York or whatever. Anyway. I remember I, I did a documentary for um, Channel 4 back in the 90s called uh, Fear in the Dark. And there was, back then, there was a teenager that we didn't, we interviewed some American teenagers, a British teenager, I think I wanted to give it a slightly American age. And there was this guy talking about the, the Jason movies, you know, the Friday the 13th uh, franchise. And he went, you know, well, then he's in Manhattan. He's like, it's, what's that? it's like he's on tour. And I'm going to go, yeah, and now it's, it's, it's like everything that was interesting, everything that was interesting about Scream is so not interesting anymore in these, oh, yeah, there's a joke as well about film studies being a bit rubbish. <laughs> oh, I, no, that's so clever, like making a joke about film studies being rubbish. I don't know? think it's about to be Shut up. film of the week. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermode and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.